For example, there are many human beings who say that Bhagwan Rajnish, he's Almighty God. Once during question answer time, there was a Hindu brother who told me, Brother Zakir, we don't believe Bhagwan Rajnish to be God. And I told him, I never said that the Hindus believe Bhagwan Rajnish to be God. I said some people, many people believe Bhagwan Rajnish to be God. I've read the Hindu scriptures. No way do the Hindu scriptures say that Bhagwan Rajnish is God. Let's put this Bhagwan Rajnish to the test of Surah class. The first is, Kul hu Allah hu ahad. Say, he is Allah, one and only. Was Rajnish one and only? Was he the only human being who has claimed to be God? There are many, hundreds. And in this country of ours, in India, there are thousands of men who have claimed to be God. But a Rajnish Bhakt will say, no, he is unique. Let's go to the next test. Allah Hussamad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Was Rajnish absolute and eternal? When you read his autobiography, it's mentioned in the autobiography of Rajnish that he was suffering from diabetes mellitus, from asthma, from chronic backache. Imagine Almighty God suffering from diabetes mellitus, from asthma, from chronic backache. And the third test is Lam yulad walam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. We know that Bhagavad Rajnish, he was born in the state of Madhya Pradesh, and he had a mother and father. And in the year 1981, he goes to America, he goes to USA, and he takes thousands of Americans for a ride. And in the state of Oregon, he starts his own village, which was called as Rajnish Puram. Later on, the American government, they arrest Bhagavan Rajnish, and they put him behind bars in prison. And Bhagwan Rajnish says that the American government gave me slow poisoning. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. And in 1985, the American government kicked Bhagwan Rajnish out of USA and he comes back to India and goes back to the city of Pune in Maharashtra, the state where I come from. And he goes back to his old center and gives it the name the Osho Commune. And if you go to the Osho Commune, and I've been there several times, it's mentioned on his Samadhi, Bhagwan Rajnish, Osho, never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December, 1931, to the 19th of January, 1990. Never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention in his Samadhi that he was not given visas to 21 different countries of the world. Imagine Almighty God coming down to this earth. He wants to visit the world and he requires visas. He was not given visas to 21 different countries of the world. And the Archbishop of Greece said, if you don't remove Rajnish out of this country, we will burn his house and the house of his disciples. And the last test, there is nothing like him. It's so stringent that no one besides the true Almighty God can pass. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. And we know Rajnish, like us human beings, he had two eyes, one nose, two hands, white beard, he wore a white robe. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. There is nothing like him. For example, if someone says, Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You might have heard the name Arnold Schwarzenegger, the person who got the title Mr. World, the strongest man in the world, Mr. Universe, the strongest man in the universe. If someone says, Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger, the moment you can compare God to anyone, whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger, whether it be Dara Singh, whether it be King Kong, whether it be a thousand times or million times, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. There's nothing like him. This is a four-line definition, which is given in the Quran, in Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, verse number one to four. That anyone who you claim to be Almighty God, if he fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as Almighty God. So whichever God you're worshipping, I would like to tell the audience here and all my brothers 
as well as my sisters, that whichever God you're worshipping, put him to the test of Surah Ikhlas. If that God passes the test of Surah Ikhlas, he is a true God. If he does not pass the test of Surah Ikhlas, he is not a true God.